Buffalo, New York. Man in the Moon, something happened. Although she tried as hard as she could and she scrambled and cajoled and sweet talked and hollered, my heart does truly go out to her. This time my mother could not make the mortgage and they're foreclosing this house and kicking the Gorgelsons out of Pyramid Corners, Oklahoma forever. Yay! <laughs> to Seattle. Are the killer wolves of the Great North gonna eat me? Not unless you look like a cute little big-eyed woodchuck. I'm dead. <laughs> it's gonna be wonderful for all of us, Mama. You'll see. This is a blessing in disguise. This is easier for you, Dorothy Jane. You always dreamed of leaving the small-town life. You always believed your own personal destiny laid somewhere beyond the horizon line. Maybe that's true for all of us, Mama. Maybe our real lives haven't even begun yet. Maybe Pyramid Corners is only a kind of way station, a, a limbo, purgatory, seventh ring of hell. <laughs> are we ready, Mama? I suppose we are, Chucky Lee. I'm sure that bus driver isn't going to wait for us to say any long goodbyes to the house. It's just a house. Just when you think you've settled down And you feel like you're almost home Just when the wheel stops spinning round Love sneaks in with the plan of its own Love comes in unexpected places Life turns in unexpected ways I swear we love at these She's never really worked for anybody else before. She's always had her own little one-woman reupholstery business. And it used to be enough to get us by. Now it seems like people aren't spending as much money as they used to, at least not on reupholstery. So my mother decided to turn to doing what she knows how to do best, being a mother, professionally. And no less than three people who attend our church had relatives to whom they wanted to recommend her services. Mr. Morgan from Seattle flew here to meet her. He seemed very impressed with how well brought up we were. Which is something I have to say I've never thought much about until now. It sure makes me curious about the type of people I'm going to be meeting in the urban metropolis of Seattle, Washington. Home of the Seattle Seahawks, the 1962 World's Fair, and the setting for Here Come the Rides, which I watch on cable TV. Which I now have. <laughs> <laughs> Although my brother and sister have a favorable first impression of our new situation, they're too young to realize that our mother is now an employee in somebody else's house and that this might bring about some subtle change in her generally optimistic disposition. Well, the house is quite lovely and the children certainly seem to be enjoying themselves. You're going to break down, aren't you? Uh-huh. <laughs> How could I have brought my family to a place we've never been to work for people we don't really know? Mama, this job saved our lives. We get to live in this beautiful house with a swimming pool and an ice maker. <laughs> I'm sure that Mr. Morgan interviewed lots of other women. And not only did he want you, he wanted your children, too. Mm, he thought you guys would be a positive influence on his kids. So that's good. Yeah, I guess. Except I can't help wondering why his kids need a positive influence. <laughs> okay, 
time? Dangerous. No, it's just a slightly more bizarre attempt. I give it three months, and they're back to the hills. No. No, this one bothers me. This one's young and strong. It's not like Mrs. Oliver. Mrs. Martelli, Mrs. Claymore, Mrs. O'Connelly. <laughs> Weston. You know, Mrs. Weston hit me once. Did you deserve it? I don't see where that's the issue. <laughs> this one is imported. Straight from some hole in the wall in Louisiana. Oklahoma. What's the difference? One's a musical. <laughs> Jethro, <laughs> enjoy your little dip in the cement pond. That's a Beverly Hillbillies reference, isn't it? <laughs> Duh, huh? Well, then you should know that Jack Leppett came from the Appalachian Mountains, which run through the Virginias, Kentucky, and Tennessee. Whereas we come from Oklahoma. So your reference doesn't really apply, babe. <laughs> Molly, looks like Jethro Bodine knocked you right on your butt. No, this is okay. A little more intelligence, a little more interesting. <laughs> Hi. Hey. hey, don't I know you from somewhere? Allowance day? <laughs> Dad! Hi, Greg. How you doing, Mom? Doing great, Dad. Good hair day. A couple college guys thought I was older than I am. <laughs> well, you're not. I just wanted to get home early to welcome the new nanny. You don't have to call me nanny. Ever. Hi, you're here. How was your trip from Oklahoma? Well, you know, three and a half days on a bus. Really? I've never done that. I don't recommend it. Well, let's see if I remember now. It's uh, Dorothy, Jane, uh, Chucky Lee, and Mary Sue, right? Wow. With all those names, you think there'd be more of them. <laughs> Yeah, y'all do have two names. Is that a family thing or just indecision? <laughs> well, I kind of always thought of Dorothy Jane as our one name, but maybe since no one knows me here yet, I should start out as just Dorothy. What do you think, Molly? Well, I've always been partial to Dorothy Jane myself. Of course, I could be biased, seeing as I gave you the name. <laughs> well, Molly and you are going to be great friends. Right, Ma? Sure, Dad. And Gregory and Chuck, too, right? Chuck? Chuck. Chuck Torkelson. I carry a badge. Look, I know this is going to be strange in the beginning, but you guys have been through half a dozen different types of nannies, and none of them ever seems to work out for long. You know, Mrs. Weston hit me once. Mrs. Weston is 90 years old. She didn't hit you. Her cane fell on your foot. <laughs> it hit me. Look, Daddy, I just want to be the first one to say that I think you've come up with a really good idea bringing the Torkelsons here. You do? Sure. You know, these people are obviously very different from us, but they seem to be a pretty polite and well-raised family. <laughs> so I guess you think we can learn from this Oklahoma woman. Well, I'm glad you've decided to give this arrangement a chance, Molly. I was afraid you might not be this flexible. <laughs> so was I. <laughs> You know her, Dad. Yeah, I know her. I know you both. Everybody in town knows you both. Why do you think I had to go to Oklahoma to find somebody to take this job? Look, Daddy, I am willing to do everything that I can to make sure this works out the way it should. And I'll help her. Uh-huh. Well, I think we wouldn't do so badly to pick up on some of the more homey qualities that Mrs. Torkelson has instilled in her family that we don't see very much of around here. Hey. I made some dinner. Nothing fancy. I just thought it might be nice to sit down and eat together. You see? Right away, something new. <laughs> Sitting down, eating dinner together. Oh, like a normal family. Hey, after dinner, how'd you like to wash the old man's car? <laughs> Dad, I think you're getting caught up in a moment here. And make sure you do the wheels. Look, I don't want to do the wheels. I don't want to be a normal family. I just can't take this kind of pressure. I think my subtle attitude was lost on him. The oldest girl, Dorothy Jane, she's the key. How do you figure? She's ready to change her name. She asked if I'd show her around. These are the signs of someone who is starving for acceptance. How can you tell that? Don't you listen in therapy? 
<laughs> okay, so she wants to be accepted. So what? So Mama likes the name that Mama gave her. Mama likes her just the way she is. I wonder what would happen if the big scary city began to have a bad influence on Mama's little angel. Ooh. <laughs> I guess we're each going to have to go through a time of getting to know each other because of how different we are. Although if I was raised in a big city like Molly, I wonder if I was just like her. Who are you talking to? Oh, hi. Nobody. Um, I was just thinking out loud. What, are you like praying? Um, something like that. It's just a private thing that I do. Well, hey, I'm sure it's really spiritual. Okay. <laughs> I'm really sorry your room had to be in our attic. Did you have a real nice bedroom back home that you miss a lot? Yeah, but this is going to be a beautiful room after I fix it up. Well, yeah. Uh-huh. Listen, Dot, I was going to Katie's at 10. It's this place in town where we all hang out. You want to come? At 10 o'clock? Well, you got something else penciled in? <laughs> no, I just, um, isn't it kind of late to just start going out? No. What are you going to wear? Oh, is there something wrong with what I'm wearing? Do you think that I dress like a geek? No. Do you dress like me? <laughs> no. Well, there you go. Hey, Gregory, what you doing? Uh, I have to go wash my dad's car. Isn't that great? Yeah. What? <laughs> we really never had a car of our own after my dad left, so I never got to wash it for him. Me neither. Oh. Oh, that's too bad. Wow. Well, you know, it, it is my dad's car, and he did ask me. You want to hold this? Sure. sure. Oh, you see this? This is a soap pad. I get to wash the wheels with this. Yeah? Yeah. What kind of car is it? Oh, it's a red 4x4. Four four. Have you ever washed one of those? No. No? Well, you know, it's just too bad he asked me, you know? I'm just not sure this kind of outfit is me. Of course it's not you. It's me. <laughs> if you want to make it in Seattle, then you're going to need to be a little less you and a little more me. Ah, oh, that's too much of me. <laughs> Look, don't you judge a person by what she is and not by what she wears? No. <laughs> Well, I think no matter where you're from, a person is what a person is. That is a very sweet, unpopular person's philosophy. <laughs> but I just assumed popular was something that you wanted to be. <laughs> you don't need to thank me. <laughs> what? You have a freckle right there. So? So only I used to know that. Mama, this is the real me. This outfit reflects who I truly am. Do you really believe that? <laughs> Not sincerely. But if I wear my Oklahoma dress outside tonight, tomorrow everybody will think I'm a geek. And if you wear that outfit outside tonight, tomorrow everybody will think you're a geek with a cold. <laughs> but interestingly enough, you're not going to have that problem. Why not? Because it is too late at night for you to be going out. So if you want to pat around the house in that getup, I'll just think of it as spandex pajamas. <laughs> Mama, this place is a chance to start all over for me. Nobody here knows me as Dorothy Jane Torkelson, Oklahoma milkmaid. <laughs> and that's the way I'm going to keep it. Look, Perrier. <laughs> perfect. This could not be any more perfect. Rebecca of Sunnybrook Farm is turning into Madonna her first night in the big city. <sighs> My guess is they will all be on the morning bus back to Bug Tussle. <laughs> Not if I can help it. What? You already have the new Batman? Yes! Oh, but my room's a little messy. I don't know if we'll be able to find it. <laughs> well, what if we cleaned up your room? <laughs> There's an idea! 
I'm keeping them. This is betrayal. We're dysfunctional. Don't you listen in therapy? Okay, Dorothy Jane, what's going on here? What do you mean? Now, I know you're looking forward to meeting new people and maybe creating some new city-fied image for yourself, but we both know I'm not about to let you go out in that outfit at this time of night so you can stop acting so strangely. I'm not acting strange. I'm in a new time zone. My behavior's just an hour earlier. <laughs> Molly told you to dress this way. She just wants me to make a good impression on people. She's very smart. She certainly is. <laughs> what have you been doing? The car. And next we're doing Gregory's room. I think he likes us, Mama. <laughs> I don't doubt that he does. Yeah. Uh, something's happened I think we should talk about. What'd they do? <laughs> Who? My little ones, Beelzebub and Mephistopheles. What are they doing? Well, first of all, I'm not so sure Molly is happy with our even being here. Of course she isn't. Excuse me? She hates that you're here. She'd do anything she could to get you out of here. What else is new? You expected this? Sure, you didn't. I guess I figured I'd be accepted like all the other nannies were accepted. And you are. <laughs> Okay, one at a time. What did Molly do? Well, I'm not sure exactly, but I think she may be trying to use this change in our environment to cause some changes in my daughter, which she figures I wouldn't like very much. And you would blame your new environment? And go home. I like it! <laughs> Her plans with the previous nannies were primitive by comparison. And what complex scheme did Gregory hatch? And Gregory seems to be dealing in the child slave trade. <laughs> Washing cars, cleaning bedrooms. I'd like to nip this in the bud before he tires of my children and sells them in the town square. I'm sorry, I guess they feel they can take quick advantage of a new situation. You know, I hope you won't judge him too harshly, Mrs. Torkelson. Oh, I don't blame them at all, Mr. Morgan. <laughs> I guess I just don't understand somebody who works all day and all night without stopping to realize that it's going to affect his children, and maybe not positively. I apologize if I'm speaking out of turn. You know, it took each of the previous six nannies the better part of a month to get too personal with me. You've been here six hours, and you got me on the couch already. I don't know whether to be encouraged or throw you out the window. I don't do windows. <laughs> Sit down, please. My wife started this little mail order catalog business of kids' clothes and toys, which she called Molly Gregory. And when she died, it was really all I had left of her in the whole world besides my children. And I guess for that reason, it just became impossible for me to take the company apart, even though it wasn't really making any money. Anyway, the point is, I sort of let my law practice dissolve instead and had to sink or swim on the basis of Molly Gregory. And it takes a lot of late nights to swim. So do you want me to sort this out with Molly and Gregory? <laughs> no, you're not ready for that yet. <laughs> oh, devil children! <laughs> what do you expect, Dad? You fly out there to the planet Hick. <laughs> you bring back their queen. Probably as we speak is up there instructing her youngings to unpack their critters into my bathtub. Sit down. And Gregory, come out from behind that door and sit next to your sister. You know everything, Dad. <laughs> Now, the reason I work as hard as I do is to try and make a comfortable life for my family. But being comfortable has cost us something because I don't get to be with you as much as I'd like. So I have to hire somebody to take care of you when I'm not here. Can I say something? No. I want you to listen. And I want you to understand this. Now, I brought this family here because these people have not been comfortable one day in their lives. But in the one day I spent with them in Oklahoma, I could see they were the most real people I'd ever met. 
And you think that that's a good thing? <laughs> I think that if you are both very, very lucky, maybe these people will get to stay here a long time and you'll learn something from them. Wow, look at that finger. I finally turned into my father. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Torkelson, I think you're going to start learning right now. Hi, Molly. Hi, Gregory. You want to present Gregory with your bill? Uh, w w what do you mean, b bill? As we understand it, you had Chucky e. Lee and Mary Sue wash a car and clean a bedroom. Is that right? Oh, oh, <laughs> they were doing me a favor. <laughs> Weren't you, Mary Sue? Don't sweet talk me, city boy. <laughs> What's the tab, Chuck? Well, minimum wage is about $5 an hour times two hours comes to ten big ones. Is that too much? Uh, yeah, yeah, it's too much, Dad. Tell him. It's too much. <laughs> I think it's more than fair. But ten dollars, Dad? Each. That's <laughs> all the money I have. Pleasure doing business with you. But they didn't even do the wheels good. I can't believe this. The mom kids get rich, I'm doing the wheels. <laughs> Here, Molly, I don't think I'll be needing these, and I won't be able to go out with you tonight, either. Oh, Molly's not going anywhere tonight. What? Get used to the sound of that. You're going to be hearing it for the next couple weeks. Okay. Start. <laughs> I'm sorry I got you grounded, Molly. I can't believe Molly was just trying to get us to go back home. Well, I don't want you to think so badly of her, Dorothy Jane. After all, she's got to make a big adjustment to us. So does Gregory. It may take them a while to warm up. Well, I hope they do. Mm -hmm. I don't really think badly of her. After all, she's taken me a few pointers on how to be popular here. Which I may not take her up on immediately. <laughs> You're a good kid. Thanks. Don't change. I won't. I think I'll tell the kids at school that my name's Dorothy Jane. Ooh, I've always liked that name. <laughs> Poor Monique. that you look just like that guy on Blossom? Yeah, Blossom. Joey Lawrence, he's got all the girls squawking. Oh, yeah, they're crowing about me. <laughs> There's Molly in the left corner. You don't waste any time, do you? Not when I want something. Dorothy Jane on the right. This place isn't big enough for the two of us. And Blossom's Joey is the grand prize. I feel so cheap. I am so sorry. I'm not. It's a featherweight frenzy for Blossom's Grove on Almost Home, NBC next Saturday. <laughs> Coming up next, it's an all-new Nurses at its new time. And everybody antes up when Jack goes gambling with Sandy's body. Then on an all-new Empty Nest, when Carol insults Dreyfus, she winds up in therapy with her dog. Followed by an all-new Mad About You on its new night and time, tonight on NBC.